Welcome, you're listening to John Highman from Commercial Real Estate Online. This is another particular video for my commercial real estate agent friends around the world. And particularly the topic of this video is all about strategic commercial property leasing. I've actually split up the video into a number of sections here. And indeed, this particular model was used at a recent workshop that I was holding in Hong Kong. So the people at the workshop were agents and brokers from around the Asia Pacific region working specifically on high end property being in retail or office buildings. So let's have a look at some of these topics to help you with strategic leasing in commercial property today. So I've split the main topic up into eight subsets. First one being your leasing market matrix, something that you need to look at. Then the landlord requirements relative to the property and the location. Of course, the tenant requirements, the tenants that you're going to place into the building and the leasing strategies in your market today, something for you to think about. So I'll cover these four in this particular video and uh, we'll get into the other four in a later video because there's quite a lot of things in these subsets to talk about. So the leasing matrix, that is your market, your leasing market. What is the matrix? Let's have a look. Number one, you need to identify the lifestyle and the demographic changes that are going on in your property market today and how they may impact businesses and tenants. You need to know those things so that you can adjust to the property market for the location. Of course, number two here will be the forces driving change locally. Now, the forces may be something to do with uh, perhaps the government, local area, maybe population shift, changes in the local area in some way or form. And of course, business sentiment has something to do with that as well. So number three will be the globalization changes for landlords, tenants and companies. And we all know that some companies are shifting the way in which they do business around the world. So that's worth remembering. remembering. And of course, uh, adjusting your leasing strategies and building leasing strategies accordingly. Number four is the technology priorities and today's smart buildings. Now, smart buildings are buildings usually with some sort of building automation system, which would control the occupancy issues for tenants and also the building performance for the landlord. And today, of course, tenants prefer smart buildings from an occupancy, occupancy perspective and certainly the office buildings that they occupy. Of course, uh, the technology priorities and tools that are available in building occupancy today will help save energy costs and also give the tenant a greater level of comfort when it comes to air conditioning, security, fire services and other things relative to the way in which the tenant does business, their staff and their customers. Number five in this leasing market matrix will be key questions to find the next leasing opportunities. There will be key questions that you need to consider when it comes to finding out where the market's going, what tenants are thinking about and what landlords are thinking about. And lastly, setting your competitive position. Given that there is a leasing market matrix for your location, your town or city will always be different than any other location. So you need to go through the competitive position, the competitors and what they're doing and thinking in the location. Where do you sit when you compare yourself to your competitors? What buildings do you specialize within? What buildings can you create more leasing churn and activity from? You need to know those things. So that is the leasing market matrix. So let's go on now to item number two, and this is the landlord requirements. Of course, every landlord is different, but uh, certainly there are six things that I would look into when I'm working with landlords relative to a leasing appointment. Number one, I need to know the landlord's investment challenges. Do they have a portfolio or is there a single building that they focus on? Know their investment challenges when it comes to cash flow, loan financing, uh, the lease structures, the lease documentation, go right through their investment challenges. Number two, landlord interaction. Set certain policies and procedures when it comes to connecting with the landlords over time. There'll be reports within that so that the landlord understands what's happening within their property on a weekly and monthly basis. So you can set the policies and procedures for landlord interaction and, of course, set some good communication tools as part of that. Number three, the differences in critical strategic investments. Now, some landlords have certain investments which are absolutely critical to their portfolio and or long-term investment. 
and that is certainly the case with the larger properties, be they large office towers or larger shopping centres. They are absolutely critical strategic investments and they will have a cash flow to watch, lease documentations to watch, tenant mix to shape and many other things including property maintenance, expenditure costs for the building, operational costs, rental structures. So understand that critical strategic investments, if the landlord has one of those and you're managing it, then understand the factors that really are non-negotiable and need to be controlled in an ongoing and critical way. Next within the landlord requirements, look at assessing investment portfolios and life cycle. Now that is for the location. Some investments perform better than others. So you need to know what they are. Just how will investment portfolios perform in the town or city? Are there particular differences in property portfolio performance? And where does your property sit, your property that you're managing for your landlord? Next, look at the structuring of leases when it comes to investment growth. Now, a lease can be structured for rental strategies, rental returns, rent reviews, option periods, uh, rental structures and outgoings recoveries. All of these things come into the lease structure and they are absolutely critical to the lease over time. Some landlords like long leases, other landlords like short leases. And of course it depends on the property investment, the property itself, as to what term of lease should apply to the occupancy, the landlord and the tenant. Next I'll mention here the landlord leasing and reporting checklist. Now most landlords want to know what's going on in their asset, perhaps weekly, but certainly monthly. And the things would normally include the leasing activity with the tenants, vacancy issues, income reporting, expenditure, financial reporting, maintenance within the property, risk controls, upcoming lease negotiations, tenant retention plans, many things like that. They are the landlord leasing and reporting issues. You can add to the list, of course, based on your landlord as you would know them and the asset as you would know it. So there are things to add to the process. Let's go a bit further here and go to number three. Tenant requirements. If you're strategically involved in leasing something, then you really do need, do need to understand the capabilities of the property and then relate that back to the tenant requirements. Now, every tenant will be different, of course. They will have a building model, uh, a property model, uh, staff requirements, customer requirements. Perhaps they have storage requirements. But all of those things come together and you need to ask questions. So here are the tenant requirements that I would normally ask questions about. Number one is the staffing requirements in the premises. Now, how many people will occupy the premises? What will they need? How will they occupy? Do they have certain security needs? Good questions. Number two, workplace culture in property selection. Some businesses, corporations, companies have a particular workplace culture which involves their staff and the way in which they do business. That will impact the way in which they select a property. Next, of course, there are corporate departmental priorities in leasing. Certain departments will need to be near others within the same business structure. So understand how the company or corporation actually does do the business on a daily basis and where the departments need to be positioned adjacent to each other or near each other or perhaps even in different buildings. Next, I'll ask questions about communication systems for office leasing. Of course, the internet is critical for most businesses today, but you'll have telephones, satellite tr transmission, communication systems, and many other things. So understand the communication systems for the building, for the tenant, and for where that lease needs to go over time. Can you support the tenant for co their communication requirements over the years? Number five, location choices for priority tenants. Now, some tenants need to be within a particular part of the building, be it a ground floor, an upper floor, maybe it's a certain quadrant of the building. And of course, they also have certain needs when it comes to precincts. Maybe it's a certain part of the city due to their access to resources, maybe other companies and corporations. Ask questions. Now, fit out and workplace design is number six here. And the tenancy will have a certain fit out configuration, which they would like to incorporate into their occupancy you'll need to control that fit out and workplace design as part of integrating that tenant into the property overall. And of course, they don't start their fit out design until the lease has been approved, the lease has been signed and many other documentary issues and rental payments have been satisfied. So let's look at number seven, planning relocations, downsizing and expansions. Now, 
This means that some tenants like to relocate for particular reasons. Could be downsizing, could be expansions, could be a need for another building. Get to the bottom of why they need to relocate. Ask questions. And number eight is rental choices in office leasing. There are different rents out there, of course. There are gross rents, net rents, face rents, uh, incentives. All of these come into play when it comes to occupancy. What will the landlord want from a market rental perspective? And will it be a gross rent or a net rent? How will outgoings impact occupancy? Can the tenant afford the rental structures, the outgoings recoveries and the rental structures over time? Of course, the lease will say how the rental will be paid. Number nine is the incentive alternatives in leasing premises today. Now, incentives are always around the place, but as a property market gets hot and becomes quite active, then incentives tend to fall away as the vacancy numbers within the property also fall away. Incentives are act, uh, active when there are plenty of vacancies around, and incentives can be uh, cash that could be rent-free, it could be some sort of fit-out incentive, and the landlord has choices. And of course the tenant may ask for an incentive, so what will that incentive be? You need to know. Number 10, occupancy cost coverage in lease negotiations. Now, occupancy cost, that is the rent, but it's also the outgoings and it relates to the size of the premises occupied by the tenant. That will be a certain number, a certain rent that they need to pay on a monthly basis. Can they afford it? How do those occupancy costs compare within the building type, the property type, the tenancy type for the location? Aggressive rentals and outgoings recoveries tend to kill occupancy over time and create a higher vacancy factor. Indeed, ingress, aggressive landlords with high rentals and high outgoings tend to create a high vacancy factor and actually uh, create a detrimental effect to their property from a vacancy perspective over time. So understand the averages that apply to the location, the precinct, the property, the property type, and uh, negotiate within the averages. Number 11, fit out cost controls and key decisions. So any tenant, when you're putting them into a property, will have certain approval processes to the fit out itself, the design, the costs. And of course, there'll be key decision makers who will control those overall issues. So understand how the fit out will be done, where it will be done, the cost of that and how it fits into the building, the building that you're leasing. Number 12 is the facility assessments. That is tenant versus landlord. Understand the facility, its capability from a service and an amenities point of view. Car parking, air conditioning, fire services, security, that sort of thing ask questions. The landlord will have a property that has certain facility capabilities, but the tenant may require other facility capabilities, so ask the questions. Number 13, lease terms for the landlord. Now the lease terms are normally reflected in the lease document, so that lease document needs to be agreed and set before you even find tenants. If you've got a standard lease ready to go, it gets a lot easier when it comes to the lease negotiation activities. Make sure that you've set the lease with the landlord, the standard lease, before you go out there to the market to resolve the vacancies and find those tenants. Number 14 is creating your leasing list, your tenant leasing checklist. Now, every tenant will take up, take up occupancy. There are things to do in the process, and of course the larger the tenant, the more complex the building, you should have a checklist to work through to keep things under control. Of course, you should never let a tenant into a building until all matters of lease occupancy, rentals and lease documentation are satisfied, including matters of risk relating to insurance. So there are things to look at there. So let me go a little bit further here to num number four, and this is the leasing strategies in your market today, understanding that we're talking about the advanced strategic leasing issues in commercial property today. So leasing strategies in your market, this is all about you and what you need to think about. Well, you should establish an ideal client profile so that you know who you're tracking and chasing as part of a prospecting process. Then you should understand lease cash flow planning. Now, lease cash flow relates to rent, of course, but it also relates to the time on market and how long it takes to lease something. Obviously, the asking rents should be reasonable for both the landlord but also for the market conditions so that you can lease something reasonably quickly. Next, looking at the tenant mix planning. If you have other tenants in the building, any vacancy should be filled with relevance to the asset itself and the other tenants in occupancy. Don't place tenants into a property without due regard for the other tenants around them. 
Number four is the supply and demand analysis. Now that should occur throughout the year. The supply and the demand for property will change and of course that will impact the leasing strategies in your market. Next I'd like to look at budgeting the asset. Now budgeting to me is the market rentals that will be asked for leasing the premises. Budget rentals are the market rents. They could be gross or net rents. They will also be passing rents and you'll need to allow for incentives in any particular lease deal. So think about budgeting the asset from an income and an expenditure point of view before you go out there and find those tenants. You need to know the parameters of income that you're chasing as part of the overall lease deal. Next, number seven, competitive lease targets. I look to, like to look at the overall market when I'm leasing something to understand what's out there when it comes to other properties in the same area or precinct which might offer similar occupancy conditions to the property that you're marketing understand the competitors, understand the targets that they're looking to to actually offer in leasing their vacancies and then compare that to what you're doing. Your property offering needs to be reasonable, also competitive. Understand the other properties that you're up against. Number eight. Now number eight is all about competing agent tracking. There are other leasing agents in the market of course some will be better than others. Hopefully you are a very competitive and professional agent in the leasing market. So your competitors will be out there trying to attract tenants and landlords. They'll be chasing the landlord appointments, in other words, the listings. It's interesting to know that your listing process should be exclusive based. In other words, every leasing appointment that you get should be gained and converted on the basis of exclusivity. Ask for exclusivity. Provide the landlord with plenty of reasons why they need to appoint you as the exclusive listing agent. Okay, let's go a bit further into database methodolo methodologies. This says that when you're leasing, you should have a database to track the people you're talking to. And that is really important, particularly in a project perspective. You'll be talking to lots of tenants in a location. Now, the tenants could be business owners, companies, franchises. There are many people that will answer your advertisement if you get the marketing right as well. So all of these people need to go into your database. Now, your database should be a software package that you use and run with. Don't, whatever you do, use a spreadsheet. It's a complete waste of time. You can't track anything in a spreadsheet and sort it and get back to it in a reasonable way. Use a database software package particularly designed for leasing and or sales, recognizing that you might also get involved in sales over time. But in your database, you'll be tracking the amount of space a person wants, the area, the location, the precinct, the building type. They'll also be giving you some sort of budget that they can afford and you'll be talking to them about the services and amenities in the building that you're actually going to quote to them. You might show them a few buildings, you might show them perhaps uh, 10 or 20 buildings over time. Of course don't show too many buildings in the inspection initially because too many buildings will, will confuse things. The rule of thumb is to show only three buildings as part of a property inspection on a single day. If those three buildings don't satisfy the tenant as part of their leasing inquiry, then show them another three buildings on a different day. Don't confuse the issue by showing them 10 properties on the one day. It just doesn't work. Number 10 here is location-based marketing. Now, if you have a leasing job to do, a vacancy to market, a property to take to the market to find a tenant, then look at location-based marketing. It's interesting to note that in about 90% of all cases of leasing, the tenant that will take up the vacancy will usually be locally based. So, that says you should be pushing the listing into the local area. Be they business owners, investors, property owners, people nearby, people who can need space, perhaps franchise groups that are looking to expand, expand the franchise network in the precinct, the town or the city, get involved with location-based marketing. And location-based marketing involves letters, brochures, cold calling, door knocking, all of those things, that's how it works. Lastly, number 11. Technology tools for leasing agents today. Well, there's plenty of technology out there for us to use. And most of them will be cloud-based, perhaps. You'll have your database in the cloud, perhaps. Then you'll have the access to that database through your laptop, computer, tablet, perhaps smartphone. All of those things allow you to interact with people and record the conversations, the results of the conversations in notes, so that you can get back to that person through some diary entry through some interaction later with a brochure, perhaps uh, an email feed with some other properties, 
All of that is part of the technology tools that we have available at our fingertips. And you might also integrate social media into that as well as websites and industry portals. So there's plenty of things to consider as part of the technology tools available for leasing agents today. So these are the four topics as part of this particular discussion. As I said to you before, the main topic here is advanced strategic commercial property leasing. I've co covered items one, two, three, and four. Item number one was the leasing market matrix. That being the things that you need to look into when it comes to your leasing market, what's going on in it, and then where you position yourself within it. Next, I covered the landlord requirements, the things that you should discuss with your landlord so that you get things right from the very start when you're resolving their vacancy problem. Next, I covered tenant requirements, and there's many of them, and perhaps you can add to this list based on your tenant, your location, and the buildings you work within. And lastly, I covered leasing market strategies today. These are the things that you need to do, get involved with as far as resolving vacancy problems for your clients and, of course, creating leasing commissions for yourself. So that's the end of this topic for today. I've covered those four things for you. The other topics will be covered in another video shortly. So my name is John Highman, and uh, if you haven't visited us before, please do so at the website, which is commercial-realestate-training.com. At that website, we put plenty of tips, tools, and ideas relating to commercial real estate sales, leasing, and property management. Indeed, today's topic is all about leasing, commercial property leasing, the high-rise buildings in the CBD, that sort of thing. Of course, they can generate very good leasing commissions if you get active and alive with the certain areas of the building that require specialist help. And indeed, you should be the specialist in commercial rate real estate leasing. Understand the market and get yourself into it. So it's John Highman. I'm about to sign off. Thank you for listening to this particular video. I'll catch you again very soon at our YouTube channel and also the website, which is commercial-realestate-training.com. This is John Highman signing off for now.